Okay, so <coughs> let us continue with our discussion of studying the behavior of a function in a neighborhood of a critical point. So, uh, uh, we have discussed in the uh, previous lectures you know the how to look at uh, uh, the logarithm the various branches of the logarithm and various branches of the uh, power function okay and uh, uh, for a fractional power all right. So, what we are going to do now we will start with start with uh, an analytic function f of z uh, having a critical point a critical point at uh, z equal to z naught. So, that is uh, f dash of z naught is 0 the critical points are the points where the derivative vanish uh, uh, assume of course we assume we assume that uh, uh, f is non constant uh, on the domain on which it is defined which includes the point z naught and uh, this will tell you that uh, f dash is also non constant and uh, well uh, on the other hand f dash is an analytic function also and uh, z naught is a 0 of that and you know the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated. So, uh, uh, I can write that uh, uh, so there exists uh, an uh, an epsilon greater than zero, or a rho greater than zero, such that well, uh, f dash of z is not zero if mod z minus z naught is less than equal to rho. Okay, so z naught is a zero. It's a, it's isolated. Uh, it's an isolated zero of the derivative, so there is a deleted neighborhood, uh, uh, and of course I should not include the value z naught, so I should put this greater than zero. So for every point in this deleted disk, closed disk, centered at z naught, uh, including the boundary, uh, except for the center, center, at every other point the derivative does not vanish. Okay, so any other 0 of f dash will lie outside this disk apart from z naught okay z naught is the only 0 there in this closed disk and that is just uh, uh, the f due to the fact that the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated right. Now uh, suppose uh, the order of the 0 of uh, z naught of f dash is m minus 1 uh, and of course I am assuming m is greater than 1 right. Suppose this the order of 0 is m minus 1 the reason for m minus 1 uh, I could have taken it as m but the reason I am taking it as m minus 1 is because you will see that uh, uh, it helps in our argument otherwise throughout my argument I will have to keep saying m plus 1 which is not very interesting. Uh, so well, so suppose order of zero of f dash is uh, m minus one at z naught. Okay, uh, we say that uh, z naught is a critical point of f of order uh, m minus one. Okay, so the order of the critical point is the order of the zero of the derivative. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, of course the critical value is uh, the value of the function at that point the critical value 
uh, is f of z0 this is the critical value corresponding to uh, z0 all right and uh, uh, now the reason why i took m minus 1 is because uh, we can consider the function f of z minus f of z0 okay consider the function f of z minus f of z0 of course this is also an analytic function because it is uh, the analytic function f minus a constant all right. So this is also an analytic function but the point about this function is that it has a 0 at z0 okay and all its derivatives uh, uh, the first m minus 1 derivatives at z0 will also vanish because the derivatives of these are the same as the derivatives of f okay because this dis differs from f only by a constant therefore what happens is that z0 becomes a 0 of order m for this function okay which has a 0 of order m at z0 okay that is the reason why I took m minus 1 here because I get m here if I had taken m I would have got m plus 1 all right. Now uh, this is an argument that we have seen many times uh, so what you are what we are saying is that f takes the value uh, 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 see it f takes the value is it not uh, f of z0 at z0 with multiplicity m okay that is the same as saying that f z minus f z0 takes the value 0 at z0 with multiplicity m okay and you know we have already seen this argument that in a sufficiently small uh, neighborhood surrounding uh, is it not uh, the multiplicity is constant okay consider uh, delta to be the minimum over mod zeta minus is it not equal to uh, rho of uh, mod of f of z minus f of z0 look at the minimum value of this mod okay and uh, so you are on the boundary of that circle centered at z0 radius rho all right uh, I want to say that uh, f the modulus of fz minus fz0 is uh, is always positive on the boundary circle okay and if not I, I want to modify it so that it that becomes true perhaps it is already true uh, let me do the following thing uh, let me assume let me also assume that uh, I not only assume that f dash is not 0 on this but I also assume that uh, 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 I will also assume that uh, mod of f of z minus f of z0 that is also non 0 okay because uh, I uh, that is also non 0 on this uh, on this uh, uh, deleted neighborhood okay the reason I can do that is because z0 is a 0 of the analytic function f of z minus f of z0 and that 0 is also uh, isolated because f of z minus f of z0 is a non constant analytic function because f of z is also a non constant analytic function you take a non constant analytic function and add a constant to it the resulting analytic function is also not constant. So, uh, uh, so let me write that down uh, assume uh, probably it is not necessary probably it will follow but anyway let, let me assume it for safety assume that uh, uh, f of z uh, is not equal to f of z0 uh, in 0 less than mod z minus z0 less than rho okay if which means that you know uh, I have already chosen rho such that the derivative does not vanish but maybe if that rho does not work I can make the rho smaller. I can choose a smaller row so that this is true and that will happen because z0 is an isolated 0 of f of z minus f of z0 because f of z minus f of z0 is a non constant analytic function okay. So, uh, so that means that uh, on the boundary also this is not 0 I mean I mean this is not equal to this which means that the modulus of the difference is non 0 okay. So, it means that this delta is positive. So, this will tell you that delta is positive delta is a positive number 
and then uh, you know once I have this I can define define for uh, uh, w with uh, mod w minus w not less than delta that is the reason I need the delta uh, we have been through this argument many times but anyway uh, define it to be the number of times f takes the value w okay if you put w equal to w not which is f of is 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 it not i have not mentioned what w not is probably i should do that now uh, uh, the critical value is f of z not equal to w not so i should tell you what w not is uh, so when i put w equal to w not i'll get n of w not okay and uh, but then i can change w inside this <coughs> all right because in this disk this is not going to vanish okay and uh, <coughs> except except uh, 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 yes f of z minus w is certainly going to be greater than or equal to delta all right on the boundary <coughs> on this boundary. So this integral is well defined right. So, so the moral of the story is that uh, this this number which we have seen many times before it is going to give you the number of times f of uh, uh, z takes the value w okay and uh, we have seen before that n of w is analytic in w and is uh, integer valued hence constant. this is an argument we have seen many times before so n of w is equal to n of w not and n of w not is number of times f of z takes the value w not which is f of z not and that is m so this is equal to m so what this tells you is it tells you the following thing for every w with mod w minus w not less than delta uh, there are n points in uh, mod z minus z not strictly less than rho at which f takes the value w okay. So let me write that down that is for every w with mod w minus w not strictly less than delta there exists uh, uh, n n there exists m points counted with multiplicity. Counted with multiplicity means some points may be repeated. Okay, uh, Z one of W, etc. Z m of W in mod Z minus Z not strictly less than rho, such that f takes uh, at each of these points f takes the value W. Okay this is what uh, n of w equal to m means right. So the diagram is something like this uh, I will okay so the diagram is something like this mm. so here is uh, my complex plane this is the w plane I mean this is the z plane the source plane and then there is this is the target plane which is again the complex plane and this is the o omega w plane and I have this well I have this disk here centered at z not radius rho and I have this function uh, f of z w equal to f z which is a mapping and it maps into and I am I am looking at the uh, at a disk centered at w not uh, with radius delta okay this is my mapping and uh, what I am saying is that if you give me a point w here if you give me a point w here then you know you get all uh, you get m of these points here okay uh, and they may be they there may be repetitions it may it means that all the m need not be distinct point it, uh, some point may be repeated with multiplicities okay they could all be one point with m times multiplicity okay which is what happens uh, if w equal to w not if w equal to w not 
then the only z for which f of z is w naught is z naught okay but it is not to be thought of as one point it has to be thought of as n point m points because it is multiplicity m the 0 of f of z minus f of z naught at z equal to z naught has multiplicity m. So, you should think of z naught as being repeated m times even though it is the same point. So, when I draw these points that many of them could have be one and the same but these are the z i of w okay. So, uh, you know uh, if you look at it uh, it looks a little like uh, it lo looks a little like the implicit function theorem see I what I am saying is if you take the equation w equal to f of z okay and you take this uh, critical point is it not then I am getting a disc such that uh, if I try to solve for z from w equal to f of z okay then I am getting z equal to m values z1 of w etcetera zm of w and these are solutions of w equal to fz namely if I plug them in f of z I get w okay. So, I am solving uh, uh, for z from w equal to f of z okay. So, what it tells you is that you are getting m solutions you are getting m solutions for the equation w equal to f of z in the neighborhood of a critical point z naught that is what it says okay and you know the way you should think of these uh, uh, so you know there are these so we have these functions z1 etcetera up to zm there are these functions and the way you should think of them as well you should think of them as you know inverses of f okay. So I am putting a I am putting a I am not writing f inverse uh, you the convention is to write f inverse only when it is said theoretically an inverse at least in which case f has to be injective all right but uh, here f is certainly not injective okay because the derivative has vanished at a point you cannot expect it to be injective at all and uh, therefore I should not write f inverse so I am putting f and putting the inverse in a bracket to tell you that you know this inverse function okay the inverse function has m solutions z1 through zm and these zis are functions of w okay okay and they all solve the equation w equal to f z all right now we need we, we, we just want to understand what these functions z i is what these functions are are they continuous are they analytic etcetera etcetera okay and we also want to know how this mapping looks like how can you draw this mapping or how you can visualize this mapping okay. So, what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to break this down uh, by using uh, what we have something that we have already seen namely we are going to use the fractional power function branches of the fractional power function function which have which come from branches of a logarithm there are m branches uh, for the uh, 1 by mth power of a, of a variable okay and uh, they come from the logarithm by choosing the various branches of the logarithm we will use that to break this map down okay and see how it looks how, how this map looks and the point is that up to uh, conform conformal equivalence that means uh, up to a holomorphic isomorphism this map really looks like z going to z power m this map uh, from here to here looks like z going to z power m that is the whole point all right that is the reason why we studied the mapping z going to z power m and its branches in the previous lecture right. So let me explain that so what we are going to do is we are going to do the following thing so you know so so let us let us study uh, uh, in a neighborhood of uh, in this neighborhood of z naught what is happening see we have uh, we have uh, uh, z naught as uh, 0 of order m uh, of f of z minus f of z naught I mean which is f of z minus w naught so uh, so what you are going to get is f of z minus f of z naught is z minus z naught to the power of m times uh, some g of z okay where uh, well g of z naught is not 0 and g is analytic in uh, mod z minus z naught 
less than rho okay this is uh, this is very simple this is just by the taylor expansion of f okay you have uh, this follows from the taylor expansion of f about what is the taylor expansion the taylor expansion is you know it is f of z is uh, f of z naught plus z minus z naught into f dash of z naught plus z minus z naught the whole squared by factorial 2 f double dash of z naught and so on you go on up to z minus z naught to the power of m minus 1 uh, m minus 1 by factorial m minus 1 f to the m minus 1 derivative z naught and then I will get uh, z minus z naught to the power of m times something I will call that something as g of z this is what I will get all right and uh, well the you know from the power m onwards I am uh, whatever is there I am taking z minus z naught power m outside the bracket outside the brackets uh, as common and whatever is inside is a anyway a power series it is an analytic function. So, uh, I call that as g z okay this is the Taylor expansion and mind you uh, all these terms will vanish because uh, z naught is a critical point of order m minus 1 okay. So, uh, that means f dash has a 0 of order m minus 1 at z naught. So, you know uh, f dash f double dash they all will vanish all right. So, the so f of z minus f, f of z naught will become z minus z naught power m into g of z that is exactly what I have written here. So, this is this is simply from uh, uh, Taylor expansion right now and mind you g of z naught is not going to be 0 all right uh, that is because f mth derivative of f with respect to z naught is non 0 right because it is a uh, uh, the order of the 0 of uh, f dash at z naught is only m minus 1 it is not m right. So, well uh, well now what we are going to do is we are going to do the following thing uh, uh, choose uh, probably it already is true but maybe what I will do is I will choose rho smaller if you want to make sure that uh, uh, g does not vanish in mod z minus z not less than rho okay choose uh, rho smaller if needed to make to to ensure g of z is not equal to 0 in uh, mod z minus z not strictly less than rho okay I want I want g not equal to 0 the reason why I want g not equal to 0 is because you know I want to write g I want to write branches of g of z to the power of 1 by m I want to do that all right and uh, you will see why I want to do that all right that is why I want g not equal to 0 right and uh, and I am saying g is not equal to 0 it is already true uh, in fact I do not have to choose rho smaller right that is because I, I have already assumed that f of z is not equal to f of z not in this okay. So, uh, this this sentence is unnecessary in any way let it be there uh, so uh, uh, well now uh, So, so we have uh, uh, m branches of uh, g of z to the 1 by m in mod z minus z not uh, strictly less than rho ok. So, you see uh, this is again a uh, I, I, I proved a lemma the previous lecture saying that you know if you have a function which is non vanishing on a simply connected domain then you can find a branch of the analytic branch of the logarithm of that function okay and what is uh, what is g of what is g of z to the 1 by m see g of z to the 1 by m is e to the uh, 1 by m log g z this is what it is by definition. So, you know and you know 
I, I, if I have an analytic branch of log g z, then e to the 1 by m log g z will give me an analytic branch of g z to the 1 by m. All right. So, uh, 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 well, of course, there are uh, uh, there are going to be m branches, but nevertheless, let me choose one branch. Uh, so, let me write that down. Uh, we we may take so if you we we may take uh, take uh, uh, integral from z not to z uh, of uh, d d log g of z uh, uh, well this will this is supposed to give me log g z minus log g z not and if I want log g z I have to add log g z not log g z not to this. Uh, as an uh, analytic branch of log g z in mod z minus z not strictly less than rho. So, this is the this is an analytic branch of the log ok and of course, where when I do this integral from z not to z uh, I can choose any path ok. Uh, the the this integral is independent of the path this is what we saw last time. So, uh, this is a this is a branch of log z analytic branch of log g log g z and uh, once you have this branch I can write a branch of g z to the 1 by m as e to the 1 by m into this branch ok. So, that is how I get an analytic branch of g z to the 1 by m all right. Now, uh, now put h of z to be well you know look at uh, look at this expression uh, z minus z not power m all right. Now, this g z can be written as g z to the 1 by m whole power m and I can take m an m common ok and so I can write uh, I can take the m root and write that as h of z. So, I am writing h of z is equal to z minus z not into g z to the 1 by m where g z to 1 by m is uh, an analytic branch of the logarithm as I it is an analytic branch as I defined it here ok. You put h of z is this, this is already this g z to the 1 by m is an analytic function and z minus z not is an analytic function those is so that this is the therefore, an analytic function in the disc and the point about this function is that uh, if you calculate uh, it is derivative at z not it will not vanish ok. So, then uh, h is analytic in mod z minus z not strictly less than rho and uh, h dash of h dash of z not is not equal to 0. Because you know if if I differentiate this I will differentiate it using the product rule all right and when I differentiate uh, that is I keep z minus z not constant and differentiate that g z to the 1 by m and then if I substitute z not is going to vanish because there is a z minus z not outside and for the other I have to add it to the uh, this term kept constant and the derivative of this which is 1 ok and if I calculate it I will get g of z naught to the 1 by m. So, in fact, h dash of z naught is actually it is actually equal to uh, 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 g of z naught to the power of 1 by m this is what it is and g of mind you g of z naught is not 0 g g does not vanish uh, where have I written that um, uh, g of g does not vanish at z naught g does not vanish at z naught. So, uh, g g of z naught is a non zero complex number. So, it has a logarithm and this is one of and one of the logarithms is uh, one of the logarithmic values will be picked by this branch that I have chosen ok and that is the value here ok and therefore, h dash is a non zero number all right. So, uh, what this will now tell you it will tell you the following thing it will tell you that you know if you uh, it will tell you that uh, h dash is going to be 1 to 1 uh, I mean the, the mapping h is going to be 1 to 1 in a smaller neighborhood of uh, z naught probably in this neighborhood itself by the statement 
uh, h dash of z is at let us differentiate that it is d by d z of uh, z minus z naught g of z to the 1 by m and uh, this is going to be uh, I keep z minus z naught constant and then differentiate this I am going to get uh, 1 by m g of z to the power of 1 by m minus 1 into g dash of z plus uh, I keep g z to the 1 by m constant and I differentiate this and uh, I just have to say that this uh, uh, this does not vanish um, probably does not but maybe let me do the following thing uh, if necessary let me uh, shrink uh, let me make rho smaller all right so that I ensure that h dash does not vanish because after all h is an analytic function therefore its derivative h dash is also an analytic function and uh, so it is a continuous function if a continuous function does not vanish at a point then there is a disk surrounding the point where it does not vanish just by continuity okay. So, uh, so you know uh, well uh, if needed if needed uh, make uh, rho smaller to ensure uh, h dash of z is not equal to 0 in mod z minus z not strictly less than rho okay and uh, well uh, and you know and in fact you can even ensure that uh, 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 but but probably I do not even need this what I really want is I want a neighborhood where h is 1 to 1 okay so that I can invert h all right uh, uh, or to even uh, or to even have uh, h uh, uh, 1 to 1 1 to 1 okay. this I can do right and I can do this because of the uh, that is because of the inverse function theorem I am using the inverse function theorem here see I, uh, I h dash is non zero at a point so it is non zero in a neighborhood and then uh, inverse function theorem says that uh, wherever the derivative is non zero you can invert in a smaller neighborhood okay. So you sh you you make rho if smaller if you want, and h will become a one to one uh, analytic function which you know is an isomorphism onto its image because that's what the inverse function theorem says. A one to one analytic function is a isomorphism onto it its image. The inverse function is also h inverse will also be analytic, all right? So uh, now what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is that this diagram can now be split up. Okay, how can it be split up? can be split up like this can be split up in the following way then we can understand the nature of uh, these uh, these functions z1 of w through zm of w all right. So what we do is we do the following thing we have this uh, so I have this disc here uh, in the in the z plane So this is disc centered at uh, z naught radius rho, and uh, well, what do I do? I apply, I apply h. So I put, uh, I put a new variable. I call zeta is equal to h of z. All right. I apply h, and when I apply h, what I going to get is, well. Uh, uh, mind you h is 1 to 1 okay h is a 1 to 1 function h is analytic all right and uh, uh, I have chosen rho small enough so that h is 1 to 1 okay. Uh, and you know an analytic function is a co is conformal okay it is a uh, uh, it maps uh, 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 an analytic uh, an analytic function with uh, non zero derivative okay is a conformal map all right. In fact I have assumed that uh, of course h dash is also uh, non vanishing there all right uh, and uh, in fact that will follow if h is 1 to 1 all right and uh, uh, therefore the mapping h is conformal which means that it will preserve angles between curves all right. So uh, what I will get is I will get a if I take the image of this is this, this disc I will get something like a disc all right. 
uh, a slight distortion if you want but then essentially uh, it is going to look well it is going to look something like probably like this I am just drawing it like this but then the point is that uh, z0 is going to go to 0 okay z0 is going to go to 0 because h of uh, z0 is 0 because h is z h of z is z minus z0 g z to the 1 by m. So if I put z equal to z0 h will go to 0 so it will map the point z0 to the origin all right and uh, uh, well I can choose uh, you know a small enough uh, neighborhood here of the origin all right. So this is how h is going to map and then you know now what I am going to do is that I am going to put another mapping here this is eta equal to zeta to the m okay when I do this uh, the combined map will be z going to h of z to the power of m and z going to and h of z to the power of m is z minus z0 power m g z which is f of z minus f of z0 see I am trying to come to f okay. So if I you know how this mapping behaves okay so you know this is what we saw last time uh, well you have this disc uh, and you know if I if I draw it for m equal to 3 you know how it is going to look like uh, if I start with uh, uh, with the ray like this all right then the inverse image is going to be uh, 3 of these things I am going to get uh, 3 separated by uh, angles of 2 pi by 3 okay and for any general m you are going to get uh, the inverse image of a ray like this is going to be uh, m rays all right separated by angles of 2 pi by m all right and uh, and you know that each sector here of uh, sectorial angle 2 pi by m is mapped by uh, zeta going to zeta power m onto the whole uh, disc all right. So this is what we have seen and you know uh, well and we know that there are branches of this here all right we know that there are branches what are the branches the branches are zeta to the 1 by m these are the branches okay and you know what those branches are we have written down those branches zeta to the 1 by m the branches are there are n branches and uh, the branches are given like this they are given as e to the 1 by m log uh, zeta uh, this is the first branch zeta to the 1 by m second branch is e to the 1 by m log zeta plus 2 pi i by m this is the second branch and it goes on like this until the mth branch which is uh, e to the 1 by m uh, log zeta plus 2 into m minus 1 pi i by m okay these are the branches of uh, there are m branches okay in this case m equal to 3 you will have 3 branches right. Uh, for example if m equal to 3 and this this is the this is the point 1 under the 3 branches you will get the cube roots of unity right in general you will get the mth roots of unity if this point was the point uh, on the real axis with coordinate 1 okay. So these are the branches we have seen this okay and all these branches live uh, they, they are all uh, uh, you know analytic on the slit plane the namely on the slit disc you have to cut out this portion of the uh, negative real axis along with the origin then you know that these all become analytic functions and where they will all live together as a single analytic function it will be above in the in the in the Riemann surface for zeta to the power, power 1 by m which is a m seated covering over this over the punctured disc all right. So we have seen this last time and then now what you do is you now uh, you know already when you go from here to here to here you have already got f of z minus f of z naught. So to get f of z f of z you have to add f of z naught. So what you do is you take this mapping this which sends neta to neta plus f of z naught this is just translation if you if you get this then finally you end up with this uh, this this original diagram you will get this disc uh, uh, well um, 
you will get an image the image will be uh, something that contains this disk all right will be will be bigger but this point will now be w0 okay so this is the whole map w equal to f of z pictured in a neighborhood of uh, small disk surrounding z0 and uh, in its image uh, containing a small disk surrounding w0 this is how the picture looks like all right and uh, what one needs to do is uh, to look at the solutions all right the solutions uh, uh, in the in this direction okay there are m solutions for every w here there are m points which I call z1 w z2 w etc z m w okay these are m solutions and I want to tell you that these solutions are also uh, it's it's obvious that these solutions will be you know analytic on uh, a slit disk okay and you can write down now what these z1 w through zm w are all right in fact they are going to be uh, so let me write them down maybe i have space here to do that so you know so this is what i should get uh if i take the first one i will get this uh, then if I take the second one I will get h inverse e to the 1 by m log w minus w naught plus well 2 pi i by m which you can take out and write as e to the 2 pi i by m times this and so on I will get and I will get z m of w to be h inverse e to the 1 by m log uh, w minus w naught plus 2 into m minus 1 pi i by m. So, these are the functions okay. okay in this case for example, you can take this to be principal branch if you want you can take it to be the principal branch. So, this this log I you can take it to be the principal branch then you will get the other branches but the truth is that you need not take it to be a principal branch you can take it to be any one branch then the then you will get the remaining branches you can of course if you want take the principal branch there is no problem okay and uh, so you see you get these these functions the point with these functions is that the z i are analytic on you see they will be analytic on they will not be analytic on the whole slit the on the whole disk but I will have to slit out the if you take the principal branch of the logarithm you will have to slit out the portion of the negative real axis from uh, I mean the portion I mean you have to slit out this piece okay you have to cut this out all right and uh, so I will write it on I will write this as mod w minus w naught sig less than delta minus see this is a line segment from w naught minus delta to w naught I throw out uh, w naught and this line segment okay on this is a slit disk the the slit disk okay these functions are all analytic on the slit disk and what happens is that uh, uh, they are all uh, functional inverses for this. So, you know see you have this you f is of course not 1 to 1 it is it is m to 1 it is m to 1 all right. So, there, there are these functional inverses so that is the reason I am putting f to the minus 1 in inside a bracket because it is not 1 there are there are so many of them and these are the zj's j equal to 1 to m they are the functional inverses okay because this followed by this will give you identity. If you plug in zj equal to if you plug in for z zj and here I should have written w equal to f z not f z not should have been w equal to f z. See if you plug in for z z j in f okay f of z j will give you back w uh, I mean it will give you back uh, 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 correct it will give you back w okay all these z j's are functions of w mind you because this is the w plane this is the complex plane this is the w plane these functions are all functions on of w. So, you take this z j of w 
you plug it in f of z you will get back w. So, this followed by this is an identity map that means you have you have m inverses you have m solutions for this equation w equal to f of z in a neighborhood of the critical point that is what is happening ok. And the uh, the the mapping looks the mapping can be described like this ok. So, in fact uh, you know if I if so you know if I take the inverse image if I take the inverse image of the disc here this is after all translation again I will get this disc centered at the origin ok. And then if I you know when I go like this I am taking the fractional mth power ok. So, uh, you know it is going to good look like this and then from here to here when I go by if I go like this it is h inverse and h inverse is conformal therefore, you know this will this will result in something like this ok you will get something like this this is for m equal to 3. So, more generally if you write m if you take any m you will get m you know you will get m curves uh, centered at z naught and going out radially ok and uh, that is how the mapping looks like ok. So, you know if you forget this uh, essentially this is just a distortion of this map this map is just a distortion of this map and what is this map this is z going to z power m it is just a distortion of the power map. So, what you are saying is if a function f uh, you look at a function the behavior of the mapping at a neighborhood of a critical point of order m minus 1 you know up to a conformal twist ok it will look like z going to z power m that is what we have proved ok and therefore, it will have m uh, branches the inverse function will have m branches and these are the branches all right. And where can you make sense of them all as a single uh, analytic function what you will have to do is that you will have to put a Riemann surface over this which is an m sheeted cover on that all these will become analytic ok and uh, they will become a single valued function. So, the moral of the story is that you get a single valued inverse for a function even at a critical point, but the inverse lives on a m sheeted covering that is the point ok that is how it looks right. So, I will stop here.